When you're first learning about components, it can be a little confusing. Uh, you're probably thinking, well, what exactly would I create? W what types of components would I make? And how can I practice this? Uh, let me give you some ideas. I'm going to switch to Safari. A CSS framework I really like is called Bulma, but you can do the same type of thing with Twitter Bootstrap or any of them. Anyways, if you take a look at the documentation, most of these CSS frameworks will have a component section. And these are really the same exact thing. So why don't we take a look at, uh, there's lots of them. Maybe we'll do two over the next couple episodes. Let's start with an easy one, a message. So for Bulma, this is a message component that consists of a heading and a message below. And now here is the markup. So why don't we do this? Why don't we download it, or I will just reference it through a CDN here. We're going to go to Sublime and pull it in. And again, I don't expect you to know Bulma. You really don't need to. It just styles a single component here. Okay, next, if we switch back, this is a message component. So if I come back, I'm going to paste it within here. There we go. And then I'll give this a class of container just to have some margin. And I think we're all set. So let's view this in Chrome. And this is what we get. Maybe, real quick, we'll give our body some padding top. Okay, but you get the basic idea. So now I'm gonna turn this into a view component. Let's imagine in a perfect world, how would I want to create this? Maybe the component is called message. Or again, remember the recommended approach is always to use a hyphenated name. Uh, some people use their business name. So I might do Laracast message. Um, it's really up to you. I really like to keep it very basic, but again, do recognize the, the recommendation there. Okay, so it looks like we have a title and a body. So maybe I could just do this, hello world, and then the body will be lorem ipsum delor sit amet, like that. Now, behind the scenes, I want that to replicate this in the shadows. Let's try it out. Right now, if we give it a refresh, we see nothing, right? Because we don't have a message component. So I will define one. View.component, it's called message, and now the template for it is going to be something like this. However, now we can substitute this with the title and then the body. Okay, but none of this is going to work yet, right? We give it a refresh and we're seeing a little bit there, but yeah, nothing's going on here. And that's because once again, we tried to pass in a title and a body prop, but remember when I said the last episode, you have to be explicit about that? Well, we aren't doing that here. So let's fix it. At the top, the props that this component accepts are title and body. Now, if I come back and give it a refresh, there you go. You just created your first practical component. And remember, you can have as many instances of these as you want. So you could have another one that says, hello universe, blah, blah, blah. And again, this kind of thing can come from a database even. It's not like you have to hard code it. But anyways, if we give it a refresh, there you go. We take complex markup and we tug it into the shadows so that instead we can use something a lot more natural. If we want to display a message to the user, then why can't we just use a message tag? Well, this allows for that. And again, you can attach behavior to this. So right now, presumably, this is something that should always display on the screen. But maybe it's something that the user can toggle and hide. Okay, well, if that were the case, let's come back. I'm not sure if Bulma has anything for this. We'll have a, a class of close and then a little X. We're not going to worry about the styling too much. Okay, so yeah, maybe presumably this is all the way over here to the right. You can do that on your own. But what I want to say now is if I click on that X, I want to remove the modal. And actually on that note, this should probably be a button. And it looks like that class doesn't exist. Okay, but anyways, we want to say if you click on this, it's going to hide the modal, right? So we can do this in a couple ways. As we've learned, we could create a method. So we could say hide modal. And then, once again, we're not going to use jQuery. We're not going to find the message and then go hide or fade out. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use a more data-centric approach. So it sounds like the display of the message should be configurable. So I will set that. We're going to return an object where we say even something as simple as show or is visible. 
Maybe that. We'll set that to true. So now, if nothing else, we're going to set the articles display using the show. It's a new directive you haven't learned. You did learn about v if and v else, but you can also do v show. Do not hide this element if what's within here is truthy. So for example, if I just hard code true, you're always going to see it. But if I set it to false, you're never going to see it, right? So we're going to bind to that to is visible, and then clicking on the button will toggle that piece of data. Once again, this is a data-centric way to deal with this, rather than diving into the DOM and fading out the element. So now if we were to say hide modal, you could say this is visible equals false. And again, that's going to refer to this single instance, not every message on the page. So if I click on blah, 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 it's hidden. So, so easy. You don't even have to think about it. And even better, because this is so basic, you can keep it here if you want, or you can do it inline. You could say right here, when I click on the button, just set is visible to false. And for basic operations like this, it's what I like to do. It's really, really easy. So now, give it a refresh, hide, hide. It's laughably simple, isn't it?